Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lorenzo Joris. I'm the CEO of Creative Zone. We're one of the largest business setup companies here in Dubai. We assist individuals when it comes to setting up their companies and, when, and with so many other things that people need after they start their business. Issues to do with banking solutions, tax and accounting support, uh, PRO solutions, visa services, etc. We have with us Alistair Payne, who is a business setup manager, Romel Gams and Zachary Haynes. Guys, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing a bit of your knowledge uh, with today's attendees. Thank you. Thank you, Lorenzo. Thank you, Lorenzo. Good. So maybe just to get things moving, the, the, the main question is, and since we have such a, 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 an international audience, people connecting from all over the world, maybe I will start with you, Alistair. Why Dubai? Why is it that is attracting so many people to come and set up their businesses here in Dubai nowadays? Fantastic. And good afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone tuning in. It's fantastic to see such a diverse crowd joining us from, from so many countries. Uh, what a good question to start with and what an easy one to answer. Why Dubai? Why the UAE? Um, the, the sunshine, the tax environment, the safety, the security, the growth, the whole energy of this country is invigorating. It's, it's almost addictive. I've lived here myself uh, nearly all my life, 25, 25 years. Um, and the business environment here for me is going from strength to strength. Uh, we've touched on tax environment. For me, it has one of the best tax environments in the world. It has an economy that is that is growing quickly, that is very much focused on entrepreneurs and SMEs. We have beautiful weather all year round. We have a country that is safe and secure. I, I don't remember the last time I, I locked my front door when, when going outside. Um, and all of that combines into making this such an enjoyable place to live, work, and, and, and most importantly, in respect to today's session, do business. Um, I also think the way the country has handled and navigated the coronavirus uh, crisis has been exemplary. The vaccine rollout is second best in the world. And, um, and I think the UAE has, has really put itself on the map as, as a new global business hub and, and business destination. Excellent, excellent. Romel, from your eyes of things, why, why would you say people are choosing Dubai? And maybe going a little bit deeper now, what, what kind of clients have you been seeing? What, what, what nationalities, where people are coming from? Are you on mute? Sorry, yeah, the, 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 mute, the mute thing again. I'm glad you asked the second part of that question because Alistair's answer to that first question basically covered everything about um, the view of being in Dubai. Um, but in terms of it's very, very diverse. We have a lot of clients from all around the world coming, um, Europe, US, um, India, Asia, Russia. It's obviously a big market for us at the moment. We've got specialized um, salespeople for this as well. Um, not just um, different regions, but many different industries. You know, we've seen a huge um, rise in e-commerce, blockchain, cryptocurrency. There's a big focus on these sort of businesses um, where you can have sort of nomad entrepreneurs that can work from anywhere um, and also looking to take advantage of Dubai, the weather, the, the, the tax benefits, all of the things that come with being in a hub into the Middle East. You know, it's a market which is, is, has a lot of growth, um, is still growing, has a lot of other areas in around us that are growing very fast as well. Hence why we've tapped into the Saudi Arabian market as well, which I'm sure Alistair will tap into a little bit later. Um, but yeah, just the ease of business, you know, it's, it's one of those markets that's really growing. And also a market that hasn't been too negatively affected by COVID from a business standpoint. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for that, Romel. And uh, maybe Zach, with you, what kind of companies are you setting up these days? What, what, is, what are the inquiries that you're getting mostly coming for? Yeah, thanks, Lorenzo. And obviously, welcome, welcome everyone. I think obviously uh, Ali and, and, and Romel have covered this uh, very well in terms of the attractiveness of, of the UAE and of Dubai particularly. Um, in terms of the companies, I'd like to echo what, what Ramel was saying as well, where it tends to be there's, there's an influx of obviously crypto has, has taken the, the, the market overseas and, and has been starting to be implemented here um, as well. Uh, so things like financial, uh, particularly remote working as well, but e-commerce as well um, on top of all of that. So to touch on what Ramel said as well, in terms of outside of Dubai going into UAE and GCC, there's been changes uh, consistently. So there's things like Saudi opening up to, to overseas investments and being more friendly, obviously updating to uh, up the, the laws and, and as I say, uh, being more friendly to investments, as well as Dubai handling the, uh, 
the COVID situation, obviously second best in the world in terms of vaccinations, things like that are, are supplying that demand of e-commerce businesses and people from overseas looking to, to, to come here to, to generate investments, to set up their, their golf um, points of, of business. So I think that's, that's a, a driving factor. But yeah, touching on the initial point of, of types of businesses, it's, it's very diverse. Um, but I'd say e-commerce is a big one. Blockchain is obviously bursting into the scene now with particularly free zones here starting to, to implement that, starting to, to realize that that's a, a, a thing. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's always good to see a lot of uh, various different types of, of companies being set up here. Maybe Romel, we can go back to you and can you address why is it convenient for people from around the world, let's say to set up their e-commerce company and set it up here and operate around the world? Why is it that you can do it like this from Dubai? Let's say if you are into management consultancy, you can set up a consultancy firm from Dubai and operate around the world. Explain a little bit the structure of things. Um, of course, so from a options perspective, um, you've got many different options, right? You've got over 63 zones here in the UAE, mainland options, the ease of business. You know, Dubai is a very international city, it's a hub. We obviously have Emirates Airlines where people can come in and out from all different places around the world. Um, when it comes to setting up a business, cost effectiveness, tax benefits, you know, there's, there's a lot of benefits there for a lot of our clients. Um, the accessibility to Africa, to the Middle East, to Europe, um, it's just a, a really booming market at the moment. You know, there's a lot of business here, but not just here, there's a lot of access to around the world. So we've seen a lot of clients that are set up companies here, not just to do business here, right? You could be a client that is from India and you're looking to sell products in Africa but you want to set up your company here because of the ease of access, because of the sort of flights that can come in, the, the, the access to ports, um, shipping, um, flights, and that sort of thing. So it's just the ease of business. It's not just that the UAE has money and, and, and there's oil money and there's, there's a lot of opportunity, not just here in the UAE, but everywhere around us as well. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for that, Romel. Then, then Alistair, let, let's go into the details of the different structures that one can set up a company here. I mean, to put it in a nutshell, there's about three main options. You can set up on a free zone, you can set up an on onshore mainland, or you can set up offshore. Can you tell all the attendees, we have 130 people connected. I can see some questions already coming through. Please include these here on the chat uh, section or in the Q&A section. I'll be reading some of these as we go along. Alistair? Yeah, uh, thanks, Renzo. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Business setup options here. There are over 60 licensing jurisdictions in the UAE alone, and they are divided into those three main categories. We have what's called offshore setups, which are generally offshore free zones geographically located inside the UAE, but are generally governed by a different set of laws and regulations than the local UAE laws. You have what's called your regular free zone companies, and those are spread out across all seven Emirates. There are over 50 active free zones here in the UAE. And you also have onshore mainland licensing jurisdictions in all of the Emirates as well. Which one of those applies to you, for me, will come down to a number of variables, but there are some, some key ones to focus on. Business activity, I'd say probably the, the most important. And particularly, how is the business gonna function inside the UAE? What is the profile of client you will target? How many employees will you have? Do you need an office? Is your activity regulated? Does it need additional approvals? That will determine almost uh, solely which, which one of those three we're, we're going to go into. Generally, if you want to be doing local business within the local market, you maybe you want to also target some of the public government sector, you're going to have to set up something onshore in the mainland. I'm sure everyone's seen onshore mainland setups are in the news heavily heavy media announcements in the last 24 hours here, and I'm sure we'll come on to this, but it's becoming easier and easier to set up onshore with 100% ownership. If you are doing business, let's say predominantly in Africa or in Europe, and you just want to create an invoicing hub here in the UAE, one could argue that maybe your regular free zone setup would be a good option where of course you can own the business 100%. And if you're just looking to create a structure here to hold assets or to own worldwide consolidate, property, company ownership, whatever it is, maybe the offshore free zone setup uh, would be suitable for you. So that's a brief summary of all three. Business activity is obviously a key one. But um, again, the whole value of Creator Zone is we listen, understand, and based on your business and how your business will function, we'll guide you into which one of the three it will be most applicable. 
Could you maybe give a, a, a ballpark figure of what would be the costs and maybe a little bit on the timelines on how long this, this would take for somebody to set up in Dubai? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there are some very attractive offers currently across all three main licensing um, jurisdictions. In the free zones in particular, we've seen a huge reduction in price due to COVID-19 and the free zones really trying to help SMEs and entrepreneurs uh, starting up. So you can get a free zone license now for as little as 5,750 dirhams. Um, those are mainly related around e-commerce activities in US dollars. So people are not familiar with dirhams, that's about 1,500 US dollars. Um, very, 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 very low setup fees. If you're looking to create an onshore company, we have packages starting in and around 23,000 um, dirhams, which is around five, 6,000 US dollars. And we, on your offshore free zones, packages starting in and around 10,000 dirhams, so around two, two and a half thousand US dollars. Excellent, excellent. All right, so we're starting to get quite a few uh, good questions coming in. Maybe Romela can send one to you. It says, what are the disadvantages of setting up in one of the free zones versus in the mainland? Yeah, so when it, when it comes to disadvantages, I would probably phrase that a little bit differently. It's, um, as Alistair said, it all depends on what sort of company you're looking to set up. You know, as if you're looking to set up a restaurant, you're looking to have a storefront, you're looking to have a shop, then you wouldn't be setting up a free zone. You would have to set up a mainland license because the advantages of, of a mainland are things like you can own your own shop, you can have a restaurant, you can work within the mainland. As a free zone company, technically speaking, you shouldn't work on the mainland. So you shouldn't have a shop, you shouldn't have a restaurant, you shouldn't be um, doing maintenance work, that sort of thing. So not so much a disadvantage of a free zone, it's more the advantages of having a mainland license, I would say. Um, uh, that is more what you've got to look at. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Zach, we have somebody asking for a bit more information on the, 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 the recently changed 100% ownership law, commercial law of the UAE. I remember you did a bit of research on this topic and you understand well this, these changes. Can you explain a little bit more what, what has been changed here for the audience? Yeah, so the, the announcement to that is it's taking effect as of June the 1st. So it's not been put into place yet. So the original plan, it was a recalculation of the percentage of sponsorship uh, due to commercial activities, which required that local sponsorship, which, which, which created hesitation from overseas businesses, um, obviously wanting to, to take the advantages of investing in the UE, but didn't want to sacrifice 51% of their business to, to do so. So this was calculated, this was announced a little while ago, but it was supposed to be announced um, and put into place six months after the Dubai Expo, in which they released a document called the the National Gazette, which is essentially just the, uh, the detailing of what the UAE plans to do. So six months after that document would, was due to be released, then they would put these into place. And as I say, it's a recalculation of the percentage based on, on different business activities within the Department of Economic Development, which again is, is considered onshore or mainland. So with that, as of the June, June the 1st is when, the, when it's going to start taking in, uh, kick into, into gear. So, as I say, it's going to be on an individual basis, and I assume it will be, ta it will be taken quite slowly, as I say, based on activities. So, um, different business activities will have different calculations. Um, obviously, we can't say as to, as to what these calculations will be, but again, it's, it's always a good sign. It's a sign that the UAE is moving in the right step to, to increase overseas investments, particularly from larger companies that, uh, that may not want to sacrifice that 51%. Although it is on paper, it's still da a daunting thing, particularly for overseas businesses, as I mentioned, who aren't familiar with the UE environment. So as I say, always a good step forward uh, to, to have these announcements and everything, I think. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the bottom line of something I can add here to the attendees, we have 150 people connected, is that Dubai has been adapting the law and making it even more appealing for foreigners to come. In the past, it used to be that uh, a lot of the, more of the bigger type of companies, the international companies needed to come in and operate under a 51-49 sort of structure, having a local sponsor. This is being taken away. And now Dubai is saying, we welcome everybody to come and fully own their companies, which is great news for, for, for foreign 
for foreigners that are coming in for for the for the whole sort of business community of, of the UAE. Those business traditionally have been dealing more with the free zones, but what we're saying is now Dubai mainland has made it even more attractive for you to own um, a business on onshore, what it's called in, in Dubai mainland. We're getting a lot of really good questions. A lot of people saying, thank you so much for this session. It's been very informative. We got a, a good question here. Shraddha is saying, what about hidden costs? Usually other companies tend to put other hidden costs in between the, the costs that are pre presented. What other costs are there, uh, Alistair, that you can explain when it comes to the full package? There's other things included in these packages that includes visa, change of status, certain things that become a little bit technical, but people would like to know what, what those could be. Yeah, absolutely. And I, of course, hidden costs everyone wants to avoid. What, what I can say, uh, a, a fundamental value of, of, of Creative Zone is we're very transparent on every fee that could possibly come up during during your business setup, but obviously beyond the setup as well. We, we prepare a document whenever we onboard a client detailing every single possible fee. So transparency is something we pride ourselves on. In terms of answering your question, additional costs could relate from additional visas, and of course, the whole range of support services that we offer to help the business grow and expand. So if you need assistance with tax and accounting, media and marketing help, if you need assistance with legal, drafting contracts, employment contracts, if you need personal concierge services, you need help opening a bank account, dependent visas, et cetera, we will tailor our proposals based on, on your exact needs and, and, and requirements. We have a, a full suite of integration partners that are designed to help all of our customers, not only set up, but to ensure you've got all the tools and resources necessary to allow your business to, to succeed and kick on and let you focus on business and let us take care of the bureaucracy, you know, and the inconvenience of registering with these, these various, uh, various authorities. So to answer the question of, uh, of, of the gentleman or lady, yes, it would depend, your, your exact cost would depend on your requirements, but I'm happy to put my email in the chat box. And if you send me an exact requirement, I can give you every fee that you would need to pay. Excellent. Yeah, I would recommend for the for the three of you, Zach, Romel, and Alistair, start including your email addresses there on the chat section so that people can start writing to you with, with specific questions. Uh, maybe, Alistair, this one is also for you. There's one gentleman, Wahid, is saying for consolidating properties and assets in the UAE, which is the best option from the three that we introduced at the beginning. Yeah, I would definitely say an offshore free zone setup. And there are a couple of good options. There's Abu Dhabi Global Market, which has an MOU with Dubai Land Department allowing, uh, allowing it to own Dubai-based property. There's also a good option in Russell Kama, um, a, a good offshore option there, which again will allow you to own Dubai property. And both of those jurisdictions are governed either under international or English law, which does offer some protection to shareholders from the local civil Sharia laws, particularly in the cases of death and implications on succession planning as well. So absolutely, I'd love to have a conversation with, with Wahid. If he could drop me an email, um, I'd be happy to sort of run through some options with him. Excellent, excellent. Romel, we have a good question here from Tamarin. He's saying, Hello, I have an e-commerce website offering on, online yoga classes and lifestyle coaching worldwide. Can I, set in a, can I set up in a free zone? Yes, um, in terms of where you can set your business up, as long as it's online, you're not doing this in person, you're not going out into the mainland to do this, then yes, your e-commerce platform could be set up online um, to provide this sort of service. So yes may not necessarily just be an e-commerce activity. There may be some other activities that you need to set up, but you can certainly set this up within a free zone. Excellent. Zach, you, you have a bit of experience setting up e-commerce type of business. We're getting a lot of e-commerce um, uh, type of questions. There's another one gentleman here asking, please expand more on e-commerce licenses and how can I set up an, in Dubai and operate around the world? So yeah, it's e-commerce e is, is very uh, diverse. Um, so in terms of operating here, it's it's quite flexible. So as long as you have been in the in the country before, 
um, i.e. having a, a stamp in the passport to, to actually get the company set up, we can do that remotely. Um, depending on, on where you're going to be based, let's, let's use the example of, of being based in the UAE and then operating overseas. It's, it's very, very flexible because there's no restrictions in terms of working with, let's say, manufacturers in the Far East, clients in, in the USA or, or whatnot. So in terms of working overseas, very, very flexible. In terms of working within UAE, obviously, Alistair and, and Ramel have, have mentioned that there are inherent restrictions in terms of um, operating within the UAE, uh, within the mainland, that, that may be uh, accomplished under a mainland license. However, that being said, there are ways to, to do so in terms of e-commerce, i.e. using a, a third-party um, distributor to do so. So in terms of how easy it is to work globally and within the UAE, very, very easy. Um, in terms of there's no restrictions, obviously, as, as mentioned earlier in the call, the UAE is getting more and more progressive, more and more um, welcoming to overseas investments, obviously more and more welcoming to individuals looking to come here as well to set up these businesses, to do these activities. Um, so to answer the question, yeah, very, very simple and, and straightforward. Again, I'd like to echo what Alistair said. If if um, if you could drop me an email, obviously I'd put my email in the, in the chat. I'd be more than happy to, to talk over the setup and what, what the pitfalls are maybe in, in, in or certain situations, more, more than happy to do so. Good stuff. All right. Um, Romel, Marvin is asking, thank you for hosting the event. For financial service industry, especially investment services, are there any important local regulations to consider ahead of incorporating in the UAE? Sorry, could you set it quick? The line was dry and dropped out slightly. Could you repeat that? No, please? So somebody is, is willing, is looking to set up a, a financial services type of company. Spe okay. specifically investment services. Mm -hmm. um, he's wanting to know more what kind of local regulations, maybe we can guide them of what kind of jurisdictions or authorities will fall under financial services. It all depends on where and how he's doing it, because as you can imagine, it's a very regulated activity when it comes to financial services, investments. These are probably better off being done in a financial free zone, such as DIFC or ADGM. Um, can also be set up in the mainland, but again, there's a lot of regulations that you need to stick by. Um, uh, so it, it's a little bit more of a complicated setup, but I would need to understand a little bit more about what you're doing, whether I would say it would be best off in a free zone or in a mainland, and which free zone it would go in. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can do it. Again, I think this is something that better to take offline because it's more about understanding your business, what you're looking to do, and would be the most suitable option for you. Definitely. So Arthur, that put out this question, please, reach out to Romel on the email that he has provided. He'll, he'll be happy to send you more information on financial services type of companies. Um, Alistair, we're getting quite a few questions related to banking. Now, of course, the, the, the first next step after you set up your company is to go and open your bank account. What, what can we tell people of the process of this? Actually, the question in this case is saying, how about bank account opening virtually? Is this something that people can do? What can you tell us about banking? Absolutely. I mean, banking is here in the UAE slightly different to perhaps what everyone's used to everywhere else in the world. Um, opening a bank account virtually, unfortunately, is not possible. There is a physical meeting needed with the banker. That's a UAE central bank requirement across uh, all, all license types and bank accounts. So no, it can't be open virtually. You would need to travel here to meet with the banker. But yes, banking, of course, is important to any business. We have relationships with several of the local banks who I think are continually improving, particularly in the SME entrepreneur space. We've seen a lot of the local banks really trying to assist entrepreneurs getting accounts open. We've seen people like Mashek Bank opening zero balance accounts. We've seen also a big push from Emirates MBD trying to appeal more to the SME and, and, and entrepreneur base as well. So we have contacts in all the local banks. We offer varying levels of service either we can do simple introductions or either we can completely manage the process of opening the bank accounts um so i would ask that gentlemen or ladies please get in touch and i'll be happy to sort of explain their options excellent excellent romel salman is asking do you recommend a free zone or mainland for a management consultancy considering that clients will come from the mena region and not just the uae Yes, exactly. That would be a perfect situation where you would have a free zone company as a management consultancy because a lot of your business is not in the UAE. 
So you don't necessarily need to have any sort of presence here. It's more about, again, what we spoke about in the beginning of the conversation, having an invoicing vehicle here in the UAE because of the flexibility to operate throughout the MENA region. Um, and not only that. So this would be a typical example of a free zone setup that we would do. Good, good. Maybe also for you, Romel, it says Hothur from India is saying, I am from India. I wish to open a branch of my existing company in the UAE in mainland with 100% ownership. Is that possible? It is possible, depending on the activity. So this is a very common um, situation for people when setting up um, companies. They came here, they have a free zone company, business is going really, really well. They want to expand into the mainland, broaden their horizons, give their business a little bit more flexibility. So they would own their company as a branch, um, as a subsidiary um, from a free zone to a mainland. So yes, this is definitely possible. Um, we can get some options sent across to you on which is the best way to do this. Um, yeah. Excellent. Maybe Zach, another e-commerce question. Mustafa is saying, I have already registered the company already and looking to distribute olive oil here in Dubai bringing them from outside the UAE. And I want to have an e-commerce website to distribute those products with Aramex. I think this is the key part of, of this statement. So he has a third party company distributing the products. Can I do so from, from an, a free zone and do I need a special license? So in terms of the distribution side of things, yes, that's the perfect way to go about it. As I was mentioning earlier, actually. Um, so in terms of a third party, organizing the delivery um, from either collecting it from the port and, and going straight to the customer is how I would say to, to do it. But to answer that portion of the question, yes, by all means, that that, that is how it's usually done. So in terms, to, to give a bit of, of, of context, in terms of uh, e-commerce, the, the two most common, one being drop shipping, which is for, for, for context, again, where you go directly from the manufacturer and you generate an, um, uh, an organizing contract with them to go from the manufacturer straight to the client, and then the manufacturer organizes the uh, the delivery, the, um, the the facilitation of the logistics side of things. The other, obviously, in this gentleman's case, where he would be doing this himself and then organizing it directly with, let's say, Aramex. Aramex is a good example. Um, again, yes, that that's a possibility. In terms of the specific activities, when you air towards things like food and beverage, I think there's. There's a lot of um, accountability that, that is, is to be had, obviously uh, speaking particularly on the olive oil side of things in terms of health and safety, things like that, where you would have to have branch into a specific activity of let's say food and beverage trading, which can be combined with an e-commerce license. But that is what I, my suggestion would be to have something specific to food and beverage rather than just e-commerce um, to have that security, particularly with the approvals, et cetera, necessary for health and safety related to a product. Excellent. I'd like to ask also our tech team to include the landing page of, 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 of that basic sort of package information. So if you include your details there, we will automatically send you a PDF that has our main proposals of whether setting up a company on a, on a, on a free zone or mainland. So if you click on that link, you will fill in your details and we will send you the brochures with the full detail and the breakdown of setting up a company in mainland. On a, on a free zone or, or offshore. Another good question here is says, for providing services to the government sector, do you have to have an onshore setup? I can answer that yes. Traditionally, it's better for you to be set up on the mainland because you're gonna be engaging with government authorities, government departments, and they tend to like to see you that you're registered within the mainland and in not one of the free zones. Uh, this one is good for you, Alistair, it says, uh, I am doing business on waste management work. If I want to set up a company in the UAE, how Creative Zone can help to avail local authorities, licenses and special permits to operate in this field? Yeah, definitely, it's a, it's a good question. So that sounds to me almost immediately like we need to go into the mainland. It sounds like there's gonna be additional approvals. One would expect that those services would be offered in Dubai then we would need to involve Dubai municipality and they will only approve really a, a Dubai onshore company. So definitely into the mainland. I think if it's a bit more service-based, there would be a good chance you can own that 100%. Um, so, but, so yeah, absolutely, definitely mainland. 100% ownership should be possible and there'll be almost definitely an additional approval through Dubai municipality. Good, good. 
Um, Romel, I know that you deal with a lot of clients from Africa per se. You've, you've been setting up a lot of clients from, from Nigeria. There's a question here from one gentleman is saying, I am into medical tourism from Nigeria to for most hospitals in the UAE. We are thinking of setting up a desk office in a free zone, but the challenge I hear is banks are not willing to open accounts for Nigerian business owners. What can we explain on what are sort of the structures that Nigerian business owners are setting up in Dubai and how is it that we're able to get them bank accounts? Um, yes, to be honest, banking is probably the biggest issue that any business has here at the moment, um, that regardless of where they're from, particularly if it's a free zone company and it has a certain activity. My recommendation would be not to set this up in a free zone. It would be to set this up in a mainland license because you have a lot more flexibility when it comes to banking. And when it comes to medical tourism, also having an office space here, it makes more sense going for a mainland license. I think some people are put off um, in the UAE with going with a mainland license because if they think about the 51% ownership, it sounds like a professional activity. So it would be 100% ownership, professional license. Also, if you want an office space, you have much more flexibility when you have a mainland trade license. So I think the biggest issue that you're having here is that you're going for the wrong type of trade license. Um, and that's where we come in in order to help you understand what your options are um, and what sort of pricing would be involved in that. Very good point. We've seen that a lot of the Nigerian investors are coming and we're, we're suggesting for them to set up DD sort of mainland companies. And, and this becomes a lot more feasible for them to get a bank account opened and, and, and so on. So feel free to reach out to Romel and he'll give you more details on this. Um, if one question, what if my company is registered in Kenya? What is the process of incorporating it in Dubai? Or do I have to uh, do I have to register a new company in Dubai per se, uh, Alistair? Well, if one wants to provide services locally, then yes, you you should get a, a trade license to operate here in the local market. If perhaps if you were sitting in Kenya and contracting with a company here and no services being provided, maybe there would be a workaround there. But generally speaking, you want to do business here, you need a local license, and certainly if you want a local bank account here, you'll need a local license as well. In terms of the options to set up, again, we go down to exact business activity. How would the services be provided online, physical? And then we could sort of decipher whether free zone or main lab would, would, would make sense. If we want to create a branch of the Kenyan company as well, that's also an option we can consider as well. So I'd like to ask that gentleman or lady, please drop me an email. I'd be happy to run through some options. Good, good. Um, uh, maybe Zach, we're getting a few questions related to the to how long investors need to stay in Dubai by the time we set up the company, they get their visas. It says the main question is, do we need to travel to Dubai for setup? And for how many days are we ex ex expected to be in the UAE for that required process? Thanks, Lorenzo. Um, so in terms of that question, I'd say break it into two categories. Um, one being the actual company setup, and two, if the individual wants to, to get a, a residency visa here and start opening bank accounts, et cetera, with, with the company. So um, in terms of having to be here to set up the company, as long as you've been here before and have a UAE um, entry stamp in your passport, the one that you're currently using, then through a company uh, like ourselves as Creative Zone, we can set up the company remotely. But as soon as you want to delve into, as mentioned before in the, in the call, getting the, the tax advantages, things like that, that, that the benefits that the UAE and Dubai can provide, then you would need to come here for, for residency visas and things to open bank accounts as is required. In terms of timeframes for the total thing, um, it's about four to five working days for a free zone setup to set up a company. And then further from that being in the in the UAE to get these visas, as mentioned previously, it would take around 10 working days. So allow two weeks. So about three weeks total for a free zone setup uh, to, to take place. For a mainland setup, it depends on the activity. It depends on the complexity, particularly if you're going with something more complex. Let, let's say setting up a commercial license with a 51% sponsor, as well as a, a subsidiary of a different company overseas as the, the Kenyan gentleman who asked the Romella question was, was probably going to do before. Um, that can take more time because there's more paperwork to do so. It's a similar setup where if you've been in the country before, you can we can set up the, the company remotely to a point and then you would have to come here and, and complete the rest of the, uh, the company setup. But I'd say around a month at least for, for a DD company of high complexity. But in terms of flexibility, like I say, it's, it's very flexible with 
setting up the company remotely. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's something we can definitely do for that. Excellent. Uh, we have a question here. I, I don't see the full name, but it says, I want to open a business where I can provide marketing campaign related products and services. SaaS, this means special advertisement sections. We like to uh, we like to we like to do business with mainland companies and also across the, the globe. What is the best option? Blah, blah, blah. You know, I I I've been in that business of special advertising sections and special reports. I used to have a, a free zone company, and you're totally able to do that through a free zone, especially that you're going to be also having a bit of a global uh, approach to business, and you're going to be engaging with with other companies abroad and the the, the mainline businesses in Dubai are going to be also okay for you to sign uh, contracts with. Uh, and Anonymous attendee is saying, do you need a bank account in the UAE if your business is e-commerce in free zone? Maybe Romel? Yes, so anytime you have a bank a company set up here in the UAE, um, uh, for your banking purposes, you will need a UAE bank account. Um, other modes of payment, obviously, you could have a PayPal account, but that wouldn't um, help that much when it comes to an e-commerce company because not everyone's willing to pay via PayPal. Um, but for you to get a, a UAE bank, for you to get a, a bank account with a UAE company, it will need to be a UAE bank account, which there are many different options. Um, there are a lot of international banks that are here as well, um, and there's also a lot of local banks that you can choose from. But you would need to bank here. Would you be able to arrange the initial visit visa? for these investors that are looking to come for the first time. Uh, Alistair, do we help people with this? Yes, we do. Uh, we have a, a concierge department that can fully assist with uh, tourist visas. Uh, you know, we can even go a step further and advise the best airline to fly or the best, best hotel to stay in here or the, the best area to stay in. So absolutely, we can assist with tourist visas. We can get them very, very quickly indeed. And that is, is definitely part of our overall service and advisory. Excellent. Rizwana is asking, oh, sorry, my, my, somebody entered something and the, 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 the chat moved. I lost the, yeah, from India is saying, we're starting a recruitment company set up in mainland. I just wanted to ask where we could, sorry, it keeps on moving, where we could start by re finding clients for this type of activity. Look, the, the best thing is, is you have your company already set up, you're ready to go. Once you're established, you're gonna start networking, meeting people over here, understanding what's your target audience, the type of clients that you're looking for. As a creative zone, we're happy to also help. We have a unit that helps with business development of, of the companies that, uh, that have incorporated with us. So reach out to us, we're happy to, to help you on this. Alistair, let's talk a little bit about Saudi Arabia as well, because recently we started offering this as, a, as another solution. A lot of our clients start doing business in Dubai and very quickly they realize they want to also move into Saudi. What can you tell uh, the attendees? Yeah, absolutely. I think everyone is, well, particularly people here in the region, understand the, the growth and potential that, that Saudi Arabia offers. What we're seeing in Saudi is they are working on a, on a vision over the next nine years to really transform their economy and diversify away from oil into other sectors and become a more knowledge-based economy rather than solely relying on, on oil. And that will be done through heavy government spending in, in a variety of sectors. So we have successfully launched in Saudi Arabia. We have opened our office in Riyadh. Uh, we will be expanding our presence there um, because we have seen such unprecedented interest, particularly from our UAE-based clients who are already doing business there. What we are seeing in Saudi is that regulations are changing there and having a local license will almost be mandatory. There were some recent media announcements. Anyone looking to work with the Saudi authorities must have a local license and even in some cases must move their regional headquarters into Saudi as well. So it's a very exciting time. Their airport has just opened this week. They are now allowing foreign visitors back into the kingdom after shutting it for the last four months. And anyone that, that's even thinking about Saudi Arabia, please get in touch. It's, it's a great time to get in there. Um, we've got a variety of solutions available for foreign investors, local investors as well. Um, and, and yeah, we're, we're very excited and, and we look forward to the growth and expansion that Saudi offers. 
Great, great. We, I have somebody commenting that Zach and Romel didn't include their email addresses on the chat. Guys, if you can include your emails. I see Romel, you're on your phone, so maybe it's a bit difficult for you to write your email. Maybe our tech team can write Romel's and Zach's emails there on the chat. And again, make sure that you include our landing page where people can go in and submit their details. Immediately, somebody will get in touch with you and you will get um, you will get all the all the details of how to set up a business here in Dubai. Um, how can one get a financial estimate to cover the entire process of setting up a business in Dubai and getting residency permit for you and your family? Good question. Please write to the guys. The guys are gonna send you a, a full in full on proposal. Yeah, sorry, I think you were saying something. No, sorry, I heard a, a little somebody chipping in. Um, and this is one of the main reasons why a lot of the investors are coming to Dubai. A lot of people are setting up a company and they are gaining residency um, in, in the country. Uh, let me see what other questions I can bring up. Zach, is drop shipping allowed in the UAE? And is it easy to open a bank account for this type of activity? Uh, drop shipping, yes, very much so. Um, I mentioned this earlier, actually, from uh, the previous question. So drop shipping, as mentioned, is, is actually one of the, the easier um, forms of e-commerce um, because you then wouldn't have to make an agreement yourself and, and everything is a little more hands off. Um, so you, again, drop shipping uh, for anyone that's not aware is where you make uh, via e-commerce. You make a, a direct agreement with the manufacturer of the goods you're going to be selling to, to import these goods on behalf of yourself straight from the manufacturer to the client, so you would never touch these goods. Now, the reason that's more beneficial is because, uh, again, as mentioned before, under company's law, free zone companies um, inherently are not allowed to transact within the UAE physically, so setting up stores and things like that. Um, so obviously the, the least hands-on um, that you can be, the, the better. Um, what, what was the, the, the second part of that question? Sorry, Lorenzo. No, it was mainly about drop shipping and, and mm. uh, the issue of opening a bank account. So bank account, yeah, let's touch on that. So in terms of the dropshipping, that, that's fine. Um, in terms of the bank accounts, it would need to be something that you would need to res be residing in the UE to, to do so. Um, as, as Alistair mentioned before, that, that virtual uh, setups, particularly without a, a visa, are very difficult. Obviously, virtual being impossible because you have to have attend, attend these meetings, etc. So I would, what I would recommend in terms of opening a bank account for that sort of activity or any activity for that matter is, is being in the country, having a residency visa. Again, it's a very simple process to, to, to attach to a license. And again, reach out if, if you'd like details from, from me to, to break that down, uh, uh, timings, et cetera. But in terms of opening a bank account with those documents, with the relevant setups that we'll provide and, and, and documents that we will provide, i.e. Uh, residency visa and, and Emirates ID, very, very straightforward, obviously just just the time it takes. Um, but yeah, like I say, reach out to me, I'm more than happy to explain it. Excellent. Uh, we got a comment here from, from a client. He's saying, I just got my professional business license through your company. Very excellent service, as I, I must say, end to end. There's the need at the moment to come into Dubai to process the residency visa and bank account opening. However, there is a ban, there is a ban on flights from the UAE to Nigeria due to COVID. Any way of circumventing this. I guess uh, Alistair or Romel, maybe Romel, you have a lot of clients from Nigeria and Africa. What are, what are we telling people that their corridors are closed at the moment and they wanna come and process their residency visas and, and set up their bank accounts? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And um, I think it's one of those things where COVID has kind of affected a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. And traveling is obviously something that is out of our hands. Um, but when it comes to starting the banking process and also getting your visa issued, you need to be in the country. Um, visa wise, we need your passport. So you need to travel here. We need to take the passport, insert your visa and then get your Emirates ID. Uh, when it comes to banking, you need to be here to start the process. So we can we have a team that can take you through the whole per process and handle it for you. But in order for you to start it, you have to be physically present to both parts. So my answer to that question is, Unless you can get to the country, you won't be able to follow through with those parts of the of the process. Mm. Excellent. Uh, maybe Zach, going back to you, it says, can a person in the UAE on a student visa get a business license and have their visa transferred 
into, into this company, in this particular case is referring to a free zone. I've seen this quite a bit and you've seen people and students have, that they've come to the country and their, their students visas, another one to stay longer in the country and one buy one option, one, one vehicle for this to set up a company, right? Zach, what, what, what can you explain on this? Yeah, I mean, in terms uh, of, of what you said, I agree 100%. Moving from, from a student coming into the country, either the first time or growing up here, the best way to, to get a visa sorted and, and start, start growing roots here would be setting up a company. So in terms of transferring from v one visa, i.e. in this case, a student visa, to a working visa or an investor visa, in this case, under, under a company, um, there is a minimum age requirement in terms of opening a company of 18. So anything below that, maybe you would have to, to sort of save the ideas for, for a little bit later. But after 18 years old, the process of switching visas is very, very simple. Um, obviously, we can process a company whilst um, you're under an existing visa. And then obviously, during the process, you can then cancel that visa and then re uh, go underneath the company via an investor visa. Again, the process is very straightforward. Um, and, and yeah, in, in terms of that question, super simple. But the only thing restricting that is, as mentioned, the age limit. Excellent. Esther is asking, hello, would like to know what is the real estate sector like in Dubai nowadays and how to set up? Well, we did a, we did a webinar on the real estate industry, I think about a week ago. I don't know if our tech team can find that link and put it out there for Esther to, to have a look. The real estate industry is booming. Now, how to set up that is a little bit more um, de delicate subject. Maybe Alistair, you can explain a little bit about what are the conditions for setting up a real estate type of company? Yeah, absolutely. You would generally have two options. I, I guess, um, again, the devil's in the detail here. What, what, would you, what would the company be doing? Would it be actually managing the properties? Would you want to take care of the maintenance yourself? Would you be managing other people's properties? Do you want to broker properties or is it simply you own a property here, want to rent it out and collect the rental income? If it's the latter, we could probably look at an offshore solution through ADGM, Rack ICC. These are quick, simple solutions, cost effective. But if you want to go a bit more into sort of management of the property, maybe even some real estate brokerage, we're going to have to put the, put the company onshore and go through Dubai Land Department and obtain the approval of RERA. So again, um, if that individual would like to give me, drop me an email, I'll be happy to explain exactly what their options would be. Excellent. Tony is saying, I run an IT tech reseller in the UK. What's the scene like in Dubai? And how are other UK businesses doing that they have set up over here? I can say, Tony, actually the, the United Kingdom is the number one uh, client uh, clientele for us at Creative Zone. The biggest portion of the clients that we advise are coming from the UK. And as you can see from Zach, Alistair, Romel, they're all uh, English background uh, individuals. So uh, the UK is, is, the, is, is one of the biggest sort of expat uh, communities in, in, in the UAE, in Dubai and, and driving a lot of the business. So definitely we will encourage you to take a look at, at the IT scene here. There's a lot of uh, UK expats doing a lot of business. Rodel is saying, can we use virtual accounts like PayPal instead of opening local accounts? And uh, Zach or maybe Romel, would you be able to shed some light on this on, on mm -hmm. other type of um, virtual account openings instead of just traditional banking? Yeah, um, PayPal is one of them. PayPal is definitely um, usable here because um my wife used that on our e-commerce business. So I definitely know that's available. Um, that's a service that a lot of people do use. Um, so there are other avenues that you can utilize. Um, but to be honest, it just helps setting up a local bank account here. And it's not as difficult as people might think. Um, it just makes sense from a perspective where you can get a payment gateway attached to your company and that sort of thing. Um, so it will help your business drastically, but you can use PayPal. There are some restrictions for certain other um, for instance, payment gateways and that sort of thing. But PayPal is fine. Um, but I would advise getting a bank account anyway. It would help your business. Excellent. Zach, it's saying, can any individual have more than two licenses and companies to, have, to own two multiple type of businesses? What is the process? Kindly explain. In that case, what would be the residency visa process? I, I'm, I'm guessing he's asking in, 
in which company will his residency fall under? So in terms of the, the residency um, question, it, it, it's his choice. Um, in terms of the multiple companies, yes, you can own multiple companies under underneath one name. There's no restriction under that. Um, so you could have, it doesn't have to be in the, the same sector as well. You can also go across um, different jurisdictions. Are you setting up a company in a free zone, doing something like, uh, like e-commerce, as, as we discussed beforehand, and then set up, let's say, a branch company or a company connected to that, i.e. sister or, or a subsidiary company, um, doing in, in the mainland, doing something more, um, more physical or, or like setting up a shop or something. So in, in answer to the question, yes, very, very much so. You can, you can own multiple companies. In terms of the residency visa, it's, it's completely um, optional as to, to which company he puts that under. Whichever one is more convenient. Obviously, any company um, with the, the right setup and, and certification can sponsor an individual with a visa. So in terms of that, very, very flexible. Um, and obviously, like I say, as, as, as we've been saying throughout the, the call, the UAE is opening up to this. So multiple companies is not an issue. And Raj, Rajiv is asking, would this be giving me the residency visa for myself and my family as well? So uh, to explain here, yeah, investors, when you are set up a company and you become an investor, you get, you get an investor visa or a business visa. You're able to sponsor your dependents, your family, your, your kids. Even you can set up, have a nanny uh, or a maid and that nanny and that maid will fall, will fall under your own your own visa, and you can start even employing people that will fall inside your company and you will give them employment visa that is still a residency visa in the country. But directly, yes, when you set up a company, you will be able to get for yourself residency visa and for your entire family. Um, Alistair, it says, I would like to retire in Dubai. Are applications accepted now, provided we comply with the requirements? Can we maybe explain a little bit of the requirements and, and whether applications are being taken? Yeah, absolutely. So the UAE has issued and has introduced a lot of extended visas or extended validity of visas from 5, 10, um, even up to all the way up to citizenship. There's also a retiree visa where you need to hold um, a certain amount of assets in the region. I believe it's over 2 million dirhams. You need to have monthly income that goes above 20,000 dirhams per month. Um, and there are a couple of other requirements as well. Providing you meet those, it is possible to get a retiree visa. However, what we still believe and what 100% is still the most efficient way to secure residency here is, is creating simple free zone companies where you don't have to part with two, three million dirhams. And we don't have to show 20,000 in, in income every month. So it's a very common assignment that, that we're tasked with currently, people looking just to secure residency here in the UAE. And 99% and of them are going into these simple free zone structures in Sharjah, Fajera, Ajman, uh, where requirements are low, costs are, are reasonable, and you get a three-year visa uh, straight away. So. Again, that, if that individual wants to get in touch, I'd be happy to run them through their options. Excellent, excellent. Great stuff, guys. There's a lot of good information flowing here. We're getting hundreds of questions. I'm not being able to read them all. Another one says, is it possible to sponsor my wife with employment residency visa? Yeah, you can do that. I had my own wife on an employment visa for some time. She was as, as working for the company. So there's no problem with that. Can any individual have, I know we read this one already. Uh, let me go to the next one. Uh, is it necessary to get an NOC from the employer if I get a license in Dubai and there is there an, an exception for this, Romel? NOC, do we need an NOC flow from the employer when it comes to opening a new company? Yeah, so when it comes to setting up a company in the mainland and the majority of free zones, an NOC is required. Um, some some free zones don't require it. It's not a requirement. Um, but yes, to be honest, an NOC is required when set up in most jurisdictions. But again, we can we can elaborate on different free zones that would have more flexibility and would not require that. Excellent. Okay, guys. Well, it's three fifty-seven. I think it was pretty pretty intense. A uh, few few minutes of questions and answers. Uh, as I said, there's a lot coming in. I really recommend you guys to reach out to Zach, to Romel, and to Alistair. Their email addresses are there. Maybe the tech team put them out again. 
maybe reach out to them on LinkedIn as well if you want to engage with them and add them on your on your network if you would like to learn more information. Your final comments. Let's get around the final comments. Zach, Romel, and Alistair. Zach, starting with you. How is it that you can help clients looking at this webinar? And why Creative Zone? Why is it that we do good uh, for, for our clients? So in terms of how we can help, it's it's pretty much a, an A to Z sort of uh, coverage, which is what Creative Zone tries to, to do. So we set up companies, we organize visas, as you'll, you'll have been hearing throughout the whole of the, the webinar of all of the things we can do. So we can set up ICCs, we can set up in Abu Dhabi, we can set up free zones, we can set up mainland companies. So in terms of how we can we can work with uh, these individuals, how we can help everyone setting up um, their, their dream thing in the UAE, it's, it's very, very flexible. Uh, why Creative Zone? Creative Zone is the largest setup company in the UAE. Um, we've been going for, for nearly 11 years now, and obviously we have over 20,000 clients that that we set up uh, businesses for. So we're we're well versed in in the uh, in the industry. Obviously, we've been here for a long time. We have people that that know what we're whatever what we're talking about. Obviously, we can help in in all aspects. We have an efficient team. Um, but yeah, I think I think our, our work speaks for ourselves um, in terms of what we've said on on this. Uh, not only not only this webinar, but previous webinars on our website and everything. And in terms of how we personally can help, obviously myself, Alistair and Ramel, again, all of our emails will be in the descriptions or in the in the chat rather. Um, and you can look us up on, on LinkedIn as well. More than happy to chat over any details. Um, even if, you know, even if it's it's very specific, uh, emails will be in the in the chat. Reach out and, and more than happy to help. Excellent. Thank you, Zach. Romel, your final comments for this? I think we lost Romel there for a sec. Maybe Alistair. Um. Yeah, absolutely. What, what, what a great session. Uh, I've never seen so many questions uh, uh, coming in. So, so thank you everyone for engaging and thank you for, for joining in. Um, please do get in touch. We're, we're always on hand to support. Uh, why Credit Zone? I, I think um, Zach's made some very good points there, but, but I think more than anything, we go so much further than just business setup. One of our, our, our slogans, if you like, is business setup really is just the beginning. And it is, it's just the beginning of your journey and it's just the beginning of our relationship. The integration partners, the support that we provide post setup is what for me differentiates ourselves from everyone else out there that offers these types of services. We have such a multinational team that are always on hand to support you. We have 11 years experience, over 40,000 clients, a great range of business setup options uh, that Zach's explained well. Uh, and I would also say now is the time. I think the UAE is, we're, we're coming out of COVID now. Business setup pricing has never been as affordable as it is today. And if you don't do it today, then, then maybe you never will because the deals and packages available really are, are some of the best I've ever seen in, in my seven years of doing this and certainly in the 11 years we've been doing it. So I would implore anyone that is even thinking about setting up or even thinking about relocating here to the UAE, have a chat with us. All our consultations are free. Our team have a wealth of experience that they're more than happy to share with you. And we look forward to welcoming all of you to the UAE sometime soon. Excellent, excellent, Alistair. Thank you for that. Manjit is saying, my experience with Creative Zone has been excellent. I've been a client since 2012. Manjit, uh, welcome to, to, to this webinar. We're happy to have you here. And we're excited that you are part of the Creative Zone family. I hope that we are treating you well. Um, excellent. Romel, are you there? Your final two cents for today? You are on mute again. I keep tapping the mute on my laptop, but I'm using my phone on my laptop, so I'm having a few technical issues here. Um, but just going back, obviously, Zach and Alistair, they covered a lot of the points, what we bring as a company. But what I would also say is there's so many, even the free zones are offering um, the packages directly these days. But the big benefit that I would see of working with Creative Zone is that we're not biased towards any type of setup. We don't just do free zone. We don't just do mainland. We don't just do offshore. We can provide the whole package. So we're not just focused on what we can offer. We're focused on what you as a client need from us. So when we speak to our client, the first thing I always ask is, what are you looking to do? What are you looking to achieve? What sort of business do you want? What's your growth plan? Where are you going from here? So then I can explain to them, okay, maybe the mainland license is better for you. Maybe the free zone option is better for you. Maybe you want a Dubai free zone. Maybe you want a different Emirate free zone. And I think that's the key to our success as a business is that we offer the client what they want, not what we, we, we think they need. Excellent, excellent. 
All right, uh, thank you so much, Romel, Sark, and Alistair. It's been a very insightful session. We would like to thank all the attendees who, who attended this. We had about 150, 160 people connected. A lot of very interesting questions. We haven't been able to, to read them all, but you have all our details there. Get in touch with us here at Creative Zone. We're here to, to help you in your journey of setting up in Dubai. I think we've explained what are the benefits of being uh, uh, based here and operating your company from here. So anything that we can do from our side to help, we will do our utmost best. Thanks again, everybody. I see all our emails there, Zach, Alistair and Romel. Thank you guys. Thank you for all the attendees. And we will see you about in another one or two weeks. We will do another of these sessions. Thanks again to everybody. Thank you very much, guys. Take care. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.